What is going on YouTube? Welcome to the JDW Sports Talk Show where every fan is welcome. We're getting ready to preview the Monday Night Football header between the Los Angeles Rams and the Cincinnati Bengals. On the other side of things, you have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Philadelphia Eagles. You know, for the Bengals and the Rams game, Rams have been impressive. Is it just an early season thing? Are they frauds? Considering they have a very good quarterback, Matthew Stafford, who is quite the incredible quarterback, really gets it done. You it, it, know, it, it doesn't matter what talent he has. If he's on the field, the team that he's playing for is 10 times better automatically. That's how good he is. Great leadership. Just a great quarterback, great player in general. On the other side, you are unsure if the superstar quarterback is going to play in Joe Burrow. Now, whether Joe Burrow plays or not, will that factor into the outcome? It could make it a closer game, but do the Bengals have a chance? We'll go through it. And then Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Baker Mayfield at home, the underdogs versus the Philadelphia Eagles. I believe it's a five and a half point. I believe the Bucks are five and a half point underdogs, but Baker Mayfield thrives as an underdog. Baker Mayfield somehow finds a way to win these kind of games. The Bucks defense has been incredible. Baker Mayfield has been clutch in big moments. So, we're going to see, and it's time to start looking into the first game. The first game we are going to look into is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Philadelphia Eagles. As we look into some storylines, some key to each side of the game. So, first storyline, we're going to go through the Buccaneers first. They're at home. Give the home team the, you know, the props first. All right, we'll, we'll come back to those injuries. I forgot to pause it. All right. The storylines. We're going to start with run defense. If the Buccaneers can stop the run at a high level and make Jalen Hurts and this Eagles defense or this Eagles offense have to throw the ball. That is the best chance they have. If the Eagles get the run game going, then, you know, the run all over, you know, like the versus the Vikings, you know, they run like crazy. They run it every single play as much as they want it to. Basically, they're not going to be able to do that against the Bucks. The Bucks have a very good defense. The defensive line is much more impressive. It's much more talented as a whole than the Vikings are. Although, you know, Daniel Hunter is one of the best in the league. And, you know, people are very, people underrate him very highly. But if this Buccaneers run defense can get things going, make Jalen Hurts have to throw the ball. And then that brings us to the second thing. If you do stop the run, you need to pressure Jalen Hurts. And this, and the Eagles offensive line has not been, what we saw it was last year. It seems that it's taking a little, you know, a slight step back. And if the Buccaneers can stop that run, which they are more than capable of, it could be a long day for the Eagles offense. It could be because we've seen Hurts struggle under pressure. But Todd Bowles likes to call a lot of man coverage. Todd Bowles likes to blitz a lot. And that's when, you know, you have Devontae Smith having a monster game. You have A.J. Brown having, even though, you know, A.J. Brown hasn't had his game yet. He will eventually. One, you know, man-on-man -man is not really what you want. But the Buccaneers have a much better defense and a much better secondary as a whole than the Vikings. And it's not even close. Carlton Davis. You, you have Antoine Winfield. And, you know, in the linebacker side of things, you have Devin White. Levante David, you have so many playmakers on the defense. And if you could stop the run, pressure Jalen Hurts, maybe have him make a few bad plays, the Buccaneers have a shot to win this one. The Buccaneers have a much better shot in this game than a lot of people anticipate them to. Next up, Baker Mayfield always, and I mean always, performs. As you see, I butchered the spelling on performs. <laughs> But Baker Mayfield always performs his best as an underdog. And he has improved as his career has went on. He is still looking a bit inconsistent throughout the games. But he's looking much better than he previously has. And he has talent. It seems like he's calmed down. He's become a much better leader. He's more calm on the field. The offense line is playing all right. Now they're going to be playing against a much, one of, you know, the a, a fantastic defense line across the board. 
But if Baker Mayfield can get this offense going, he plays at a high level. And he plays, you know, at the very least, the level he's been playing at. Buccaneers got a shot. And I know James Bradbury, you know, he's come off the cushion. He was, you know, he was off for a week. Uh, but you're getting other guys back for the Eagles. It's, you know, I'd still say that that Eagles defense, even with James Bradbury in week one, they struggled mightily against Mac Jones and the Patriots in the passing game. Anyways, Mac Jones was passing the ball really well with no issues. And I don't think Mac Jones is a great quarterback. He gets the job done. He's a pretty good quarterback right now, but Look, look, look at the Patriots' weapons, and then go and look at the Buccaneers' weapons, and tell me if you see a difference. And Baker Mayfield has a much has much more big play ability, home run ability than Mac Jones does. Now, will he make a mistake or a mistake or two? He could. It's possible. But don't forget, this Buccaneers' defense has forced a lot of turnovers in the first two weeks. They forced quite a few turnovers against the Vikings. Uh, I don't remember who they played the next week. I'm completely blanking on who they played the second week. I'm blanking. I I, I need to look it up quick. Okay, so let's see who the Bucks played the second week. I, do, I don't think... No, it it, it it was the Bears. Now, the Bears, iffy. You know, as I said for a while, I don't think Fields is the answer. Um, that Bears team is going to have a long year. Long season they're going to have once again. But the Buccaneers have a good defense. They have a young quarterback with a who is great as an underdog, who has always found a way to get it done as an underdog. It's just when Baker Mayfield plays the best, no one's taking the box. And is this the Geno Smith story of last year with Baker Mayfield? Like I said, he's calmed down. It seems like he's more mature, a better leader, He's playing good ball. He's playing good ball. And if he could limit the turnovers, uh, you know, and if the Buccaneers can get a few turnovers on defense, which is very possible with, the, with you know, the way their defense plays and who they're playing and where the Eagles are currently, the Bucs have a good shot in this one. They have a shot, much more than people think. And I don't think that the Buccaneers are better than the Eagles. It's just one of those games I don't think it's – a great matchup in a way for the Eagles. We'll, 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 we'll keep going on about that more soon. All right, so for so for the Eagles' offensive line, they must have the best game they've had so far this year. The offensive line seems like it has taken a step back from last year. Now, uh, they are getting older. Lane Johnson's getting older. You know, it's, it's an aging offensive line. Now, they've still been great in goal line situations, pushing them. And those are completely legal. It's completely fine. I don't think that should be taken out of the game. But that offense line has not been great. And last week they played a decent pass rush in Minnesota. Decent. But the first week they played the Patriots, they were getting a lot of pressure on Hurts. A lot of pressure. Now, and then you know, and, and then the next week you have Daniel Hunter. They they could not block Daniel Hunter. And Daniel Hunter is one of the best in the league, and that Vikings defense line was getting some pressure. Of course, not after they got the run game going. They struggled to stop the run. But this Vikings defensive line, don't forget, Vita Vey is questionable. Vita Vey is one of the most underrated players in the entire National Football League. He is one of the best defensive tackles. He is that good. He is so underrated. He is hard to move, one of the best run stoppers in the NFL. So the offensive line must have the best game they've ever had. And, you know, if they can't get the run game going... This offense line better be pretty good in pass protection because this Buccaneers defensive line is going to come after Jalen Hurts. It is going to come after him. This defense line is impressive, and they like to send extra guys too. So Jalen Hurts better make right decisions. Better get the run game going, as I just mentioned. If they go, if they don't get the run game going, that Buccaneers defense line is just going to tee off. It's just going to tee off on Jalen Hurts. They're going to pressure him all day long. They're going to keep him in the pocket. It could be a long day for Hurts if they don't get the run game going. Especially, I mean, yeah, you know, the, you know, they have great weapons in Smith and AJ Brown, very high receivers to cover. Two very good receivers, great receivers. 
But don't forget the Buccaneers have decent corners. If, Car if Carlton Davis is out, that's going to be a big loss. They still have Antoine Winfield in the backfield. They have other guys that can make big plays. And if Jalen Hurts can't make the right decisions, if he can't throw well under pressure, which we saw, you know, even versus the Vikings, he overthrew a couple. He overthrew A.J. Brown once. Jalen Hurts has not looked great. He looks lost. He looks like he misses Shane Steichen. And Jalen Hurts is going to have to get better under pressure. Going to have to be. There's no excuse. Okay, next thing. They're going to have to keep Mike Evans and Chris Godwin calm. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, incredible. So many people, so many people overlook Mike Evans. Even before the season, there was many people overlooking Mike Evans. And I'm like, come on. I you know, I get it, he's getting older, but he's Mr. Consistency. And he's not just Mr. Consistency in a way where, you know, he's okay. He's consistently great. He's a great receiver. He's an incredible receiver. And a lot of people are saying he's going to take a step back. I'm like, calm down. He's not taking a step back. He's one of the better receivers in the league. He'll go up. He'll make big-time catches. He, you know, he's great leadership, doesn't complain, always plays hard. One of the most underrated and underappreciated wide receivers in the NFL. Love Mike Evans. I always have. Chris Godwin, another one. Big-time Big play threat. Every single play. Great route runner. Great hands. Baker Mayfield just has to put it in, in, in the vicinity of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. They will make big time plays. They will make big time plays. And Kate Auden last week looked pretty good. So, if they let Baker Mayfield and they let Mike Evans and Chris Godwin get hot, it could be a long game for them defensively. Because if they could get the ball out quick to these guys... Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, who can get open, who can make these big-time catches. It could be a long day. It could be difficult. It is difficult when Baker Mayfield has it on and he is playing really good, especially when he's an underdog. It is hard to stop him. Yes, I just said that. Now, the Bucks might not be able to get the run game going. We saw they've struggled to get the run game going a little bit. And the offense line isn't exactly great. But they do like to throw it to the running backs of the backfield. A challenge that Minnesota didn't really present Philadelphia with. We'll see if the Buccaneers try to, you know. And, you know, towards the end of that game, Kirk Cousins and the Vikings really made the effort to get back into it. And Baker Mayfield isn't going to give up either. I'm not saying Baker Mayfield is Kirk Cousins. He absolutely is not. But he can't be more than enough to do it, you know, for you know, for the Bucks to do what they need to do to pull off this upset tonight. Now, like I said, I don't think the Bucks are better. I don't think so. I just think this is one of those games, especially being week three. You know, it's not the greatest of matchup in a few ways. And just a few storylines and a few things to look at and be like, yeah, the Vikings actually, or you know, the Buccaneers. Might be able to pull something off here. And as we've seen, Brian Johnson and the Eagles defense has not been as nearly as explosive as it was last year. Well, they better get it figured out for tonight. Especially that offense. If they don't get that offense figured out in the passing game tonight, yeah, they're probably going to lose, in my opinion. They're probably going to lose. Okay, some of the injuries. So... For the Bucs, they do have quite a few injuries. You have Carlton Davis, very good cornerback, very very underrated cornerback. He is questionable. Vita Vea, he's questionable. Devin White, he's questionable. Those are probably three or four of their best players in defense. Good thing Antoine Winfield's playing. Good thing. Because Antoine Winfield is a monster. He's, he, he's one of the best young safeties in the league, if not the best. That's that's how good Antoine Winfield is. Great tackler. It's a ball hawk. Great instincts. Then you have offensive guard Cody Monk. 
you know, if all those, if all three of those defensive players are out, it might be rough. It might be tough. But if at least two of them play, at least Vita Vea, I think they'll be fine. I think they still got a good chance. Cody and Mock, I mean, their offense line isn't that great, but Mock has been all right. Um, it's questionable. Who's out? Defensive lineman, Clyde Kansi. It hurts. It hurts. Linebacker. But they're still deep on the defensive line, so I'm still not worried about it. Linebacker. I, I can't even say the name. I don't know who it is, to be quite honest with you. None are questionable for the Eagles. Out for the Eagles. Boston Scott and Quez Watkins. So, A.J. Brown and... What's his name? Devontae Smith are going to have to show up big time. And, ho and hopefully they can stay healthy throughout the season because behind them, they don't have much depth behind those two. So, but they're playing. They're in. The You know, not having Quez Watkins, really speedy deep threat. That's all right. They still have other, they still have other guys. And, well, you know, a, you know, A.J. Brown and um, Devontae Smith are deep threats. Uh, they're both big time playmakers anywhere in the field. But losing Quez Watkins, is a little bit of a hurt. You know, that hurts a little bit. Final score prediction. I'm taking the Tampa Bay Buc Buccaneers 23 to 20. As I mentioned throughout this video, and it probably was quite obvious throughout this video that I was taking the Buccaneers. Now, if all three of those defensive players are out, I may switch. I may switch, and I will post it in my community tab. As I'm recording this, like a couple hours, a few, quite a few hours before the game. On to the next one. We have the Cincinnati Bengals at home. Versus the Los Angeles Rams. As we will start with the home team as always. Would it matter if Burrow does play? Either way. Is it going to matter? In a way it does. In a way it doesn't. He brings an experience. And he brings a confidence to this team. That no other quarterback would bring to them. And the offense is just so horizontal. I I don't know if it's going to be. I don't know if they're going to be able to get anything going. When you have an offense that is so horizontal. Uh, you know, opposing teams can load the box, which makes it even more difficult to run. Now, Joe Mixon has been like one of their very, very dim bright spots. But other than that, I mean, like, they can't do anything, man. They can't do anything. Because the offense has to be horizontal for how bad the offense line is. And Joe Burrow has not been able, he's not been great on deep passes. He has not been able to connect on them. And you kind of want, want to get the ball deep to Jamar Chase. You kind of want to throw it up for T. Higgins down there once in a while. The issue with that has been his calf. And he has said he has re-injured it. And it's been said that he's going to try. We're going to see at kickoff. I don't think he should play. Don't play him. Offense line is horrible. Are you going to continue to let him get hit? Don't play him. Horrible decision to let him play. Now, whoever you have in their quarterback, they have great weapons. But the offense line can't block anything. They can't do anything. And yeah, you know, maybe more accurate down the field and such right now, considering Joe Burrow's calf injury. I you know if Burrow plays, this game can be closer. If Burrow doesn't play, I don't expect this game to be close at all. I really don't. As I just mentioned, offense line don't have much else to say about that. You guys know how bad the offense line is. If the offense line can block at a decent level, they got a shot. But, you know, but they can't. Offense is too horizontal, as I mentioned earlier. And when the offense is so horizontal and you can't you know stretch the field vertically at all. It makes it very easy for a defense. It makes it much easier on the on you know, on the defense. You have great weapons. You can't you you but you can't really utilize them to the best of their abilities because of that offense line. And how horizontal the offense line or that or that offense has to be. It's pathetic. The Rams run the ball. If the Rams get the run game going, the Bengals aren't winning this. You know the Bengals defense is not going to be able to stop them. Matthew Stafford, I severely underrated that. I, sur I think, no, a lot of us forgot how good Matthew Stafford was, and, you know, including me. I'm guilty of this. Matthew Stafford is incredible. One of the better 
quarterbacks in the league, in my opinion, when, you know, right now, when in the field, he makes, you know, it doesn't matter what the talent is on the team. He will elevate that talent. That team will look 10 times better with Matthew Stafford in there than not. Stafford is that great of a talent, and I severely underrated him, and I forgot about that so easily, and I am very guilty of that. Very guilty of it. He's one of the best arms in the league. Gets the ball out quick. And we forgot he played with lesser talent at Detroit for quite some years. But, you know, he, they've been getting it done. They've been getting it done. Next up, defense line needs to get pressure. If that defense line gets pressure, that's game. That's it. The You know, Bengals, I, I, I don't care who that is in the backfield. I don't care or who's playing quarterback for the Bengals. If it's Joe Burrow or if it's not. If they get pressure like they have them, if they're passing, you know, if their pass defense has been as good as it has been, the Rams are going to win by 30 points. May Okay, maybe not 30 points, but they will win by quite a bit. I don't see the Bengals having a shot. Pass defense needs to stay strong. Like I just mentioned, the pass defense has been much better than expected. Um, and if it can keep going tonight, you know, you're, it doesn't matter who's in there at quarterback, you have some pretty lethal weapon to get a deal with and T Higgins, Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, even Irv Smith, if he plays, they have weapons. So, so the past defense will need to continue to play strong. But you know, I'm not gonna say it's easier because it's you know, because offense is horizontal, you know it it is, but you're playing you're playing some pretty damn good um, I'm blanking. So, you know, some pretty damn good receivers. Some of the best. Some great receivers. So, last week the Bengals played the Ravens. Who did they play in week one? Who did the Bengals play in week one? Let's see. Who did they play in week one? The Browns. That, that Browns defense is elite. That Browns defense is great. Uh, so let's see how the Rams are going to play because we always see teams like this. We you know we all expect it to be bad and start out really good. So could this be one of those games where that defense just doesn't play as well? And if Joe Burrow's in there, maybe he's still, you know, he's not, he's obviously not going to be 100% and he may struggle, you know, to put weight in the back foot, be accurate. But if he could do it, you know, if he could do just enough, Get that ball out quick, and these receivers can get open and just make big-time plays all night long. You know, be, just because we kind of fooled throughout the first through couple of weeks with this Rams defense, okay. I could see the Bengals winning. But, to be honest with you, I've seen a Rams team that has just played really well. they played really well. They've played some... Good teams, too. Well, yeah, they played the Seahawks in week one, and they just straight up looked better. And then last week, they put up a good fight against the Niners. They put up a good fight against the Niners. So, we'll see, though. We'll see if that continues to be what goes on. Injuries. Joe Burrow, Irv Smith Jr., both questionable. As I, I've already talked about Jerbo, uh, about the Jerbo situation. If he's in there, you know, obviously they will be much better, but I still don't expect him to win. Tight end, Irvin Smith Jr., this thinks he's a, he's a big playmaking tight end. Does need to catch the ball a little better. And then questionable for the Rams is wide receiver Puka Nakua. Hopefully Puka plays. You do have Tutu Atwell and a few other guys that can make nice plays in that offense. And Matthew Stafford just elevates them. Stafford will, you know, he's that good of a quarterback. He's one of those quarterbacks that just elevates the talent around him and he makes what he has work. So, we'll see. We'll see. This is one of those games, it's like hard to predict in my opinion in a way, but I have the Rams winning 31-24. If Gerald Burrow doesn't play, I can see the Rams winning 31-13, 17-16, 14. I'm not sure if the Bengals will be able to score 20 or more points um and you know the Bengals defense isn't horrible but 
the, but you know, Matthew Stafford, you know, whoever plays, he's going to make it work. You have Tyler Higby, you have Cam. At no, 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 Ky no, no. Kyron Williams actually played really well week one, but um, I'm taking the Rams. I, th I think the Rams are going to have a big day on offense and have a good day in defense. Um, uh, you know, maybe the Bengals make a few big plays here and there, but at the end of the day, the Rams have been playing like, have just been playing like the better team. So I'm taking the Rams over the Bengals. So that is it. That's all I have for our Monday night football double header preview between with the Los Angeles Rams, the Cincinnati Bengals, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Philadelphia Eagles. So that is all I got for you guys today. Thank you for tuning in to the JW Sports Talk Show. I hope you enjoyed this preview. Give me your predictions down in the comment section below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on these games and who you think is going to win. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you for tuning in to the JW Sports Talk Show. Wherever you guys welcome. If you enjoy, make sure to like, subscribe, put the post on occasion by allowing so you don't miss any future videos. This is JW Sports Talk Show signing off.